One of the most popular hot takes about Final Fantasy VII is that it's overrated, and that the decades of love and passion from the community that have gone into Final Fantasy VII and its accompanying games is undeserved. Well, my friends, I am here today to give the opposite opinion. For in my opinion, Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core, and Final Fantasy VII Remake collectively combined to create one of the most compelling stories in the video game medium, in my humble opinion. And that is why it comes in at number 6 in my top 10 video game stories of all time. I love Final Fantasy VII. It's one of the games that got me into the franchise and that entire style of game. I grew up a PlayStation kid, but not an RPG fan. Like, the most I did was Skyrim. I grew up an action game fan, or an FPS fan, or an MMORPG fan. But these games that would be collectively come to be known as JRPGs and RPGs and games like Final Fantasy VII, they eluded me for so long. But one summer, I decided after playing Final Fantasy XV and starting XIV, you know what? Screw it. Let's play some games. And I played Final Fantasy VI and then Final Fantasy VII back to back, and I loved each one of them. But there was something about VII for me. From its overall tone, its aesthetics, its world, its characters, something about VII just enraptured me so nearly completely that when the remake was announced, I was anticipating it. I was excited, a little bit hesitant, about how they were going to stretch out the game to fulfill a 40-hour game for just the Midgar section, but I was still hopeful and optimistic. It looked like an entertaining time to me nonetheless. I would then go on to play the remake and fall in love with this world, this cast of characters, all the more. It was easily one of my favorites, in terms of both world and characters. And then Crisis Core would get a remaster, and I would play that game and love it all the same again. Zack became one of my favorite protagonists. The ending, an emotionally gut-punch-fueled prelude to the events of the base game, that would recontextualize Remake for me to make it more compelling, more enrapturous of an experience as a whole. And I think Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core, and the Remake are one of the best examples that I can give of a story being not perfect, but not needing to be perfect. Not needing to master any one thing, but doing a series of things very well that also just happen to align and appeal with my personal interests. That is the strength of Final Fantasy VII in my opinion, is that not everyone's going to like it, but if you do, you fall head over heels for it, like I did. Cloud is one of my favorite protagonists of all time, and it's largely because of the way they deep dive his mental state later on in the game. And sure, you can argue this next point is roughly, somewhat at least, nostalgia driven, but I don't see an issue with that. Because for me, it was one of those first games alongside Halo that showed me that there can be more to a silent protagonist, a self-insert protagonist at that, than just acting as a glorified camera to take you from point A to point B for the story to unravel around you. I was thoroughly engaged with watching Cloud go from this brooding loner character at the beginning to this character with a deep, complex mental state, diving into his memories and his dreams, Tifa trying to desperately reach out for him. Sure, there are aspects of Final Fantasy VII that just confused me, a lot of that having to deal with Sephiroth as a character, and sure, not everyone's going to vibe with that, and I can understand if people don't like it. I'm not going to sit here and try and exude the virtues of a game that you should absolutely love. If you don't like it, that's entirely fine. I can only give you my perspective on it and why I like it so much. Because while there were elements of the story, especially when concerning Genova or Hojo or Sephiroth and their overall backstory that confused me for years and still do to some degree, everything surrounding that, I just loved so much. The story of Shinra, the main cast of characters, Tifa, Aerith, Barret, Cloud, Red 13. In the remake, you had characters like Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge. The remake helped flesh out Wall Market to make it feel alive, and they did that with the slums overall and Shinra as a whole. It really felt like a city that had multiple layers with their own different microcultures and all that. It was so cool, and I loved that aspect of it. And when I hop over to the base game, I haven't played it for a little bit, but the pacing is wildly different, but it has its own charm to it. That moment from leaving 
Midgar and having an entire world to explore. It's one of those iconic moments in video games in my opinion. A truly special event that was a landmark in the video game industry for its time. With scenes and plot twists that still are culturally relevant in today's video game landscape that is still talked about. And I think it's hard to overstate how important just having a cool world is. And yeah, we can get lost in the weeds of story details and plot points and thematics. And we can get lost in that discussion all we want. And sure, I enjoy getting lost in that discussion as well. But sometimes, the important things are the simple aspects. The things that emotionally resonate with us the most. And for me, there are two main elements to that. The world itself and the cast of characters. I find them so endearing and fun to be around and to explore. And to learn more about as the story slowly unraveled as their dynamics strengthened throughout the course of each game. The world itself, the magic system, the powers that be. I really enjoyed those elements. And sure, Sephiroth is not like the best villain in base Final Fantasy VII, but you play Crisis Core in the remake and he's one cool dude. He really is, and he's compelling to have on screen at every moment that he is. I'll always make the argument that in the original Final Fantasy VII, he was never intended to have this monolithic sta status that he now possesses in the video game industry. He always kind of felt like this character meant to spur Cloud along in his own emotional journey and development, and to affect the things around him to further Cloud's storyline. And in that respect, and in that role, I think Sephiroth is a very compelling antagonist for the original Final Fantasy VII. He gains infinitely more character when it comes to Crisis Core, and then he becomes this big mystery and this source of gravity, this wellspring of coolness in the remake, where whenever he's on screen, or whenever he's mentioned, or even hinted at being around, it's as if the entire scene focuses in on him specifically. Do you know how well constructed of a character you need to have to be able to pull that off effectively? Again, it's not going to work or land for everybody, but for me it does. And the way that Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core, and the remake have all flowed into one another and relate to one another, it's in an interesting way that appeals to me. I love it when video games and stories are allowed to get existential and delve into these themes that relate to very human concepts. I love games like that. It's one of the reasons that Xenoblade is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, video game franchise of all time. And Final Fantasy does this also in very effective ways. And to me, one of the best representations of that aspect is in Final Fantasy VII series. Sure, I haven't played every game, I haven't seen every movie about Final Fantasy VII, but I don't need to, because I've seen the important aspects of it. Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core, and the remake, I'm looking forward to Rebirth. Could they absolutely drop the ball and tarnish what has been built so far? They absolutely can, but that is a conversation for when those games come out, when we know those storylines, when we know what happens. But for me, for right now, with the context and the story that we have at our disposal right now, I'm absolutely enthralled with Final Fantasy VII. And I don't think a story or a world or a cast of characters needs to be perfectly written in order to exude that sense of coolness that just gravitates the player and especially me to it and refuses to let go. That is the power of Final Fantasy VII in my opinion. And that is the reason that it's in my top 10 video game stories of all time. Because there's just something about the aesthetics, the story, the themes, the way it tackles Cloud's character arc, and the way it's tackling this overarching existential concept from the original game to Crisis Core all the way to the remake that I find so absolutely engrossing. And you may disagree, and that is fine. But for me, that is why I love it so much. And I'm going to call the video and that entire conversation right there. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.